Welcome back to another episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're playing a game on the Amiga CD32. Now, this is actually a weird system for me to play something on. Um, there we go. I think it's loading. This is this is such a weird system. Okay, so, so full disclosure, the reason I'm playing an Amiga CD32 uh, game today is because the Angry Video Game Nerd actually did a... Uh, Amiga CD32 episode about a month ago, and uh, I, I, I'm a huge fan of the AVGN, um, I've always said that, and actually, I know so little about the Amiga CD32, and I had on my list um, this game to play at some point, oh, uh, does the controller not work? Um, God damn it. This, this is so glitchy, by the way, uh, I'll, I'll tell you guys about this in a second, but I, I guess my controller doesn't work here. Um, anyway, before I resolve the problem... Um, so, so the, the nerd basically inspired me to go check out this system, um, and I'm not going to play, you know, crappy games, but um, there was an awesome game called Alien uh, Breed, which is a whole series that I've wanted to play for a long, long time, and so today we're going to jump into Tower Assault on the Amiga CD32, if I can get my controller to work, so uh, let me see if I can figure this out here. Oh, uh, I don't know, okay, the game seems to be loading, so we're just going to go with it. Um, the Amiga CD, uh, CD32, by the way, uh, you should go watch the Angry Video Games Nerd episode, uh, on it if you haven't seen it, but not only is, so in the, in the episode, the nerd talks about how crappy the hardware is, and to get his version of the system to run, you need, he needs to leave a paint bucket on top of the CD tray to, like, hold the CD in place. Um, ironically, I'm playing this game on an emulator, and the emulator is no better. I've never had this happen before, but, like... Um, the, every emulator I've tried to play the CD32 here, it's just, like, been a nightmare of things not working and, like, not understanding why. This version that I'm using, uh, right now of Win UAE, you actually have to start the Amiga CD32 with no disk image loaded, otherwise the game won't load. Then once the Amiga CD32 starts, then you pause the emulator and insert uh, an ISO image, like putting a CD into the actual system, and then for some reason it loads. So like you can't specify, it's like there's a spot in the emulator to specify the game you want to play. You can't specify the game you want to play before you start the emulator or it won't work. It's, it's nuts. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Um, anyway, we got some awesome full motion video here. This is clearly one of the game developers and not an actor. He's sort of like budget Kane. Like if you remember Kane from the Command and Conquer series, how he was like such a cool character with a goatee and whatever. That was clearly the budget Kane. Uh, basically just one of the developers. This game, by the way, is a top-down gauntlet-style sci-fi shooter by Team 17. So the team who would later do worms and stuff. Um, and so I'm kind of excited about that. So can we skip this? intro video somehow okay i got i gotta get my controller working here okay I, I think i think we're making some progress here so one of the things that i am super interested in in retro games are unique systems with unique controllers so for the long longest time i've wanted to play a game on the amiga cd32 um i love this music by the way it's very like blade runner-esque and uh, the Amiga CD32 actually has one of the like weirdest controllers I've ever seen. Well, not the weirdest, but it's kind of weird. It's like a boomerang kind of shape, shape like an inverse boomerang. It kind of looks like a Super Nintendo controller, like maybe a third party one where they, uh, they were trying something weird. But uh, all right here. Okay, I am in control. I am in control. Control type pad, yes, okay. And retreat mode. Who wants to retreat? Hurt players? Wait, why is that off? Uh, difficulty normal can we go to easy tough no 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 normal oh there's only normal or tough interesting games sometimes do that uh, they give you uh, difficulty modes but it's like normal is the easiest mode they don't give you an easy so all right let's go ahead and start on normal why not um, as I said, so I, I knew about Alien Breed for years. It's a game that's long been on my to play list. I mean, th there's a whole series of Alien Breed games. I think this is like the third entry or something like that. 
Um, so crash landing as you scramble from the remains of the Predator dropship, you find yourself at the southern border of the colony grounds outside MRU 9B. Perform a brief, uh, what, Reese? and proceed into the colony complex by one of the available entrances. Caution, area is mined. Let the assault begin. So uh, this game, I think the storyline is pretty much like uh, Aliens, uh, where like you crash land on an alien planet, and they're supposed to be colonists, and you're trying to like track down the colonists or whatever. Um, so this is it. It's a, it's a top-down... Basically, it's sort of like Gauntlet, but set in sci-fi. And uh, you have like a gun. You can shoot stuff. Um, eventually we'll start killing aliens, which is awesome. This is basically what, uh, what a, what a James Cameron Aliens video game should have been. Um, it should have been this. I'm, like, killing, like, geckos and stuff. Oh, God, I'm just, like, walking over mines. You know, <laughs> the mines are, like, clearly visible. You think that it would be pretty easy to avoid them. Oh, my God, but it's, like, you just walk, like, right into them. Um, Alien Breed always caught my attention because of its, its cool graphics. Can I destroy these things or no okay because i want to i want to get up in here oh my god can i destroy no can i walk can i just there we go all right you have to take sometimes you got to take a mine to the face to blow a to blow a hole in the entrance to a secret base where you're trying to hunt down the colonists um and i don't know what that is but i will take it this first level is largely just sort of to orient you here's my mission I'm just, let me just explore the buttons for a sec any other button oh you can actually walk backwards yeah so like <laughs> there's like a backwards mode like if you want to like walk backwards and shoot that's actually really cool uh, maybe we'll be using that if we get cornered and there's a bunch of aliens trying to get us we can like back up and like shoot as we go I, I like that a reverse walk button that's that's totally awesome um, it seems as complex as built up is built up of six minor towers and a large central tower. Access to the nearest tower is due north, and paths through the minefields lie due east and west. There seems to be little activity except for security lasers. Um, ooh, and an area scan? I like what I'm seeing here. Okay, so basically if we go to the right and then up and then to the left and center, so that's where we want to go. All right, nice and simple. I like when games are not overly complicated and it's not sort of a, like, where the hell do I go game. I like that. You know what? There's a little bit of exploration here, but there's also, you know, some some nice direction. So I, I dig it. Also, what is falling from the sky? This is What a terrible planet to build a colony on. There's just rocks randomly, repeatedly falling from the sky. The civilian complex lies directly north and seems to be a good place to start for your search. Guess what? That's where we're going to go, then. We're looking for these these colonists. What kind of zany trouble did they get into? Did they get infested by xenomorphs and all get eaten? Those silly colonists. Can't leave them alone for ten seconds without uh, aliens coming and uh, destroying them all. As you enter the first floor of the civilian complex, your senses tell you that something terrible has happened here. Surely somebody must have survived the attack. Find out what you can. Um... Oh, God. Okay, that guy is totally dead. So something bad happened to him. Um, these The scenes of mutilation and death are almost too much, but you must search on, discover the source of this abomination, and repel it. Your heart goes to dead, and you vow to avenge the savage killing. Look, and there's an alien. Oh, that totally is a xenomorph. This is Aliens, the video game, guys. Oh, look, and he's, like, eating... Oh, they're, like, eating people? This is so cool. Okay, can I just say that... Okay, hold on. This is one of the connecting corridors, uh, the link to the east and west. You can exit to Sector 2. So this game actually has multiple exits to each level, which is kind of cool. It's the first uh, alien breed game that has sort of a non-linear uh, level layout. And look, there's a little, uh, I think that's Chinese writing at the bottom. So in the Aliens movies, uh, uh, it was the Wayland Yatani Corporation uh, ran everything in the distant future. So like Chinese corporations had taken over. So there's this sort of subtle Chinese influence and in all the, like, uh, culture and stuff. I love it. I love it. My God, this is a better Aliens game than any Aliens game I've ever played. So first of all, um, oh, man, there's just, like, colonists in there, but the graphics look so good. I am so digging it. Okay, this is my mission, so I'm just still exploring the buttons. Okay, I guess that door is locked. All right, let, let's carry on here. Um, but, yeah, so we're right now we're in the Twilight Zone between... 
uh, you know, Christmas and New Year's. Um, my Thousand One series is still on hold. So this is this is usually a time of year when I just play like a bunch of random games that I've been wanting to play for a long time. And let me tell you, Alien Breed here has been on my list for a long time. I have long known about it. Long thought the game just looks totally awesome. I, I never knew that much about it other than just a few quick snippets of gameplay that I'd seen over the years. But from what I saw, oh, you even have ammo. That's so awesome. Um, but from what I saw, I always thought, damn, like this is this is a game that I think I would enjoy. This is a game that I think I, I need to play, that I think I should be playing. And lo and behold, my God, I would have loved this game as a kid. I would have loved this game. This game should have been on Super Nintendo or something, I'm telling you. Like, the graphics and stuff, this totally could have been on Super Nintendo. I mean, maybe not the blood. Maybe it's more of a Genesis game or whatever. Is there an alien breed on Genesis? See, I don't even know. But my god. Like, I, I seriously would have loved this game as a kid. You guys ever have that where, like, you know, as adults, you, like, discover a game that you, uh, you know, uh, you, you never played, a franchise that you never really played... But once you start playing it, you think, my God, I should have been playing this when I was like 12. I would have like sat around like all Saturday playing this game. Like it's so cool looking, so cool. I mean, we're on level one. I don't even know. Are there different weapons in this game, different aliens? What is there to explore? I don't even know when I'm sold on the franchise already. The, le the deck lift leads to the second floor of the civilian complex. It requires the deck lift uh, pass before it will operate. Your only other option is to use the corridors linking the two towers to the east and west. All right, well, we'll do. You know what? Just like life in Jurassic Park, we will find a way. Look, this guy's running from us. You get back here, buddy. Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> so this is a top-down game like Gauntlet, but instantly there's something I like about this game more than Gauntlet, and it's not necessarily the sci-fi atmosphere. I mean, sci-fi is awesome, don't get me wrong. Uh, fantasy is cool, too, although I always feel like fantasy always gets more love in both... Uh, movies, TV shows, and video games than sci-fi does. Sci-fi always kind of feels like uh, it's just a little less popular than fantasy. So a good sci-fi game, I'm not going to scoff at. But I will say that one thing I like about this game way better than Gauntlet is the fact that your life doesn't just constantly drain away. Um, I can play this game at my own pace. I can go ahead and explore this this bizarre alien um, you know, base at my own pace not have to worry about slowly dying that like i know the people who love gauntlet they they're not faced by that that criticism doesn't hold any like water with them you know and and you know when i when i played gauntlet one and gauntlet two in my series i mentioned how i wasn't a huge fan of that part of the game and some fans of the game left comments like oh you just don't understand blah 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 and it's like yeah like you know you're free to continue to like gauntlet uh with the draining health that's absolutely fine but like for me I just, I'm just not a fan of, of that sort of general gameplay mechanic. Um, here, let's let, like walk backwards. Yeah, come on, come on! <laughs> That's so cool, I love that move. Oh yeah, it's so handy too. Oh my God. Oh, energy low, okay. Oh, there's like a hole where the aliens are spawning from. Can we like destroy that hole? Oh my God, let's get this health. Oh my God, they're gonna continue to spawn out there, aren't they? Oh, and I can't do anything about it. Uh-oh, okay, run. Run. What is over here? What is over here? What is in this room? Why did I come in here? This is like an alien spawning ground. What are these green things I'm getting? Don't even know. There's health at least, which is good. What is this, a pass? No, I, I can't tell. Oh my God, there's just aliens everywhere. Oh, key cards or something. Okay, run, run. Oh, they got me. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, I have extra lives. Oh, yes. You sweet, sweet game. Oh, why did I get that health? I don't need it now. Let's get the hell out of here. Can I, like, close the door behind me? Oh, my God. Get away. Damn. Oh, that that was tense. A little tense. I, I didn't realize how much danger I was in, so it actually wasn't that tense. It was more like after I realized I died, I was like, oh, you can die? Oh, th this was a bad idea? I didn't realize. Um, anyway. So, yeah, Alien Breed here. Are, so, are there any games that you guys have discovered as adults that have like really blown you away and i don't mean like a new game um like like i mean that happens all the time you like discovering new games but has there ever been like you discover an old game and you think man this game like existed for like 10 years and i never played it um actually you know what 
you know what? Speaking of new games, there th this actually did happen to me uh, recently. Can I just exit here? Oh, I totally can. Oh, I'm just, okay. All right, well, we're in a new place. Oh, look, and there's a terminal. How do I do this? Oh my God, this is great. In-text system main menu. <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa. Game statistics, weapon supplies. Okay, so that's the gun that I've got. Oh, I want the try laser gun. How do I get it? Credit limit, 18,000. Uh, can I buy this? Can I buy this? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Tool supplies. Oh, ammo and stuff. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so hold on. Go to next. And then, oh, I can buy it. Yes, weapon bot. Yes, yeah, I did. Oh my God, this is so exciting. This is so exciting. I love this. I love this. Okay, hold on. Do I have my gun? Oh yeah, we do. We did it. <laughs> We're heroes. <laughs> oh my God, we got a laser gun. Holy crap. I'm on level one and I'm having so much fun in this game. There's so much to explore. The graphics look awesome. The atmosphere is cool. Um, I don't know how to look at a map. Uh, that That's actually the one failing is I, I don't know how to get to like a, a map. Uh, scenes of mutilation, exit corridor. Okay, can I get out of this though? Is there anything else? Okay. Well, you know what? We're just gonna have to explore, explore manually. Oh look, there's a thing over there. All right, we'll, we'll keep wandering around. I'm sure eventually the exit will reveal itself. Oh shoot, wait, how do I switch guns? How did I do that? That's not what I wanted. Oh my god. Okay, I have no idea what happened, but I seem to have lost my laser gun. Oh well, whatever, it's okay. Maybe between levels I'll look up what I did. But uh, anyway, speaking of speaking of game, getting into games. Um, oh, there's an area scan. Okay, so hold on, we are here. So wait, where was there? Oh, there's an exit to the left. Oh, so to the left or right of the map is where you exit. All right, easy enough. Cool, thanks game. Just just when you think you like need something, the game provides. We can check our little thing here. What the hell did I do wrong? Um, I can't buy those here. That's okay. Whatever, you know what? The next time we encounter one of these terminals that has a machine gun, we're gonna buy a machine gun. And we're not gonna mess around with the buttons then. We're just gonna go ahead and use our machine gun to our heart's content. Um, anyway, yeah, so sorry, speaking of games, um, recently, actually, I got into a game which actually was still old. So you know what, you know what I've realized? You know one thing that this Thousand and One Quest has actually taught me? It's that, like, literally, I find there's no point anymore to getting hyped for new games that are coming out. It sounds maybe somewhat sad, but, like, you know, bear with me for a second. There are so many classic games like this that I never got to try that I'm kind of, like, at a point where I'm like, what... Like, why am I getting super excited about a new game that's going to come out? I'm, like, buried in games to play. You know what I'm just going to do is just wait until games are a couple years old, at the least, and, like, get them on sale. Like, why would I buy a game when it's brand new? And so recently, actually, um, the PlayStation Network had a sale on The Division. I don't know if you guys have heard of this game, but it's, it's sort of like a third-person shooter set in sort of an apocalypse. And it's kind of like a looter shooter, they call it, a bit like Destiny, but uh, the gameplay is a bit like Uncharted, but with way better shooting mechanics. And let me tell you, this game is freaking addicting. Um, hold on, let me come back to this idea. You you are presently north northwest of the crash site. From here, there's access to the tower to the west. Born to Sector 4 of the Colony Grounds, the Sinister Main Tower stands to the northeast. All right, let's continue to explore. Oh, look, we're outside again. Interesting. Are these asteroids going to keep falling on me? Okay, I don't see... There are no asteroids. We seem to be okay. So let's sort of see where we are. So I guess we can just continue to go west if we want. Interesting. Um, but yeah, The Division. My God. This game... Sheesh. So I, you know, I was a huge fan of Halo back in the day. Um, I did get into Destiny quite a bit because it was another shooter by Bungie, and I always found that Bungie had really tight shooting mechanics. But, you know, Destiny did wear on me. It is It was a bit of an abusive grind, to be totally honest. It was, it's basically an MMO, but it, it was, like, really grindy. 
And it was, you know what, I had a lot of fun with Destiny back in the day, as I've mentioned before on my channel, but, uh, you know, it ran its course, and I was happy to sort of say goodbye uh, when uh, when I kind of moved on. And, and, you know, I wasn't really looking to get into Destiny or anything, any, any shooter like that again. Then comes this, like, PlayStation sale. Why can't I get in here, by the way? And they're selling... Um, they're selling the division for ten bucks. I never like I'd heard a little bit about the division, but honestly, I hadn't even really kept up with it. And I just looked up a video. I'm like, what is this game that I can get for ten bucks? And it looked really solid. It was like this third person shooter, and I was like, eh, ten bucks, sure. And I played it on the first day uh, that I got it, and I, I sort of felt like, hey, this is actually like a pretty good game. It's it's fairly fun. Uh, can I go back? No, I can't. Oh, God. I'm, like, trapped here, and I don't know how to go further. Oh, there's lots of health, though. Maybe we can go get that. Uh, the first day I played it, I'm like, yeah, this isn't bad. And the second day I played it, I'm like, huh, these... Oh, look, there's, like, a samurai that died. Is that his sword? Yo, we totally got to get in there. Okay. So now I know where we're going. Um, we'll come down here and get all the health. The, you know, the second and third day, I started getting into it more and more and more. And then before I knew it, I was, like, literally addicted. The past month, I have been playing that game, like almost every day um it's at a point where like i really need to oops i didn't even read that wait well, i think i can bring these back up auxiliary generators uh generator units to activate the unit simply press the switch in the top left corner if successful the unit will buzz to life these uh units control the power to the western fence okay so how do i press a button the top left corner wait get away from that oh there we go you just walk into it <laughs> Oh, this is so cool. Uh, Team 17, you beautiful geniuses. This is great. Oh, my God. This this game is so interesting. Man, I, I can't believe I never played it. But, yeah, anyway, I, uh, I I couldn't believe I hadn't played The Division either because I, I uh, I'm loving the game so much. It's, you know what? As I say, I was a huge fan of Halo, fan of Destiny, um, was a fan of Gears of War 2 and the Uncharted series, but like I wasn't, I didn't really have a, a shooter that I was currently playing, and I sort of missed it. I sort of felt like, ah, like it'd be nice to like have a modern shooter to play again, but I'm like, what, what shooter's even good on the place? Like I have a PS4, I don't have an Xbox One. If I had an Xbox One, I probably honestly would get uh, the new Halos, because like I always found Halo to have fun shooting mechanics. But on PlayStation, like, even Uncharted, even though I like Uncharted, I recognize its shooting mechanics are not nearly up to par compared to, like, uh, you know, other other shooters. So it's like I was always sort of felt like on PlayStation, eh, you know, I didn't really have a good shooter to play. But now that I have The Division, I'm like, you know, I, I'm, like, playing it too much. I, I like, love it. Like, the, the shooting is so satisfying. The guns are satisfying. And so it's kind of like Destiny where you have to, like, accumulate all these, like, rare and exotic weapons and stuff. What, what's interesting about Destiny is that, you it, you know, Destiny would be, like, you work for weeks and weeks and weeks just to have the chance to get, like, one exotic weapon. Whereas in this game, I feel like it's it's so easy. If you want an exotic weapon, put in an hour or two and you'll get one, you know? Like, it's, there's a very clear path to getting stuff. And, yeah, I don't know. I just... The games is really well made. The same way that I'm having so much fun with Alien Breed here, um, I surprisingly really enjoyed The Division. So that's my little plug. If you never played the game, you like uh, third-person shooters like Gears of War, The Division is an insane value. Um, it's definitely worth a play. Anyway, in recognition of your valiant efforts, the IPC have transmitted the following passcode in order that you may restart subsequent missions with your current status. Oh, so on the passcode... On the main menu, you can actually insert codes and you can come back uh, to further in the game. So that's cool. That's interesting. You know what? I never, I, I don't think I've ever really encountered a, a game on a computer that had a passcode. I mean, I guess this is an Amiga 32, so it's technically a console, but it feels more like I'm playing it on a computer. Anyway, this quiet zone was managed by just a small number of crew and is relatively harmless except for radioactive zones developed by power subsystems. This is a low security area with little of interest. Proceed to the upper levels for continued briefing. I like how they like brief you at the beginning of... Uh... Oh, we have the laser gun again somehow. I don't know how it happened, but I will take it. Oh, maybe I ran out of ammo or something like that and I just I needed laser gun ammo. Sweet, so I didn't waste my credits. Okay, but I am wasting my life. I'm about to die here again. And it has zero extra lives. Oh, man. You know, the interesting thing about passcodes... So I remember back in the NES day, game most games could not did not have saves, but there were passcodes. 
And the interesting thing about password codes and passwords and stuff is that it was a little crappier than having an actual save game because you couldn't actually save what you were doing. You know, like in Legend of Zelda, you could actually save your game. Oh, look, that's like a... Oh, that was like an alien that had turned to stone, like someone medusa did him and turned him to rock. But uh, like in Legend of Zelda, you could save your actual progress. But in other games like River City Ransom or whatever, you just have a really long passcode. Actually, that one, the passcode was so specific, you really did save your progress. But um, anyway, the, down th the downside about passcodes is, of course, you don't save your specific progress. It's just sort of like access to a level or whatever that you got to. But kind of the good thing about passcodes is that you actually could just look them up, you know, or like a friend could share them, you know, like... If, let's say that you had a game, oh shoot, the walking backwards I'm still not quite used to. Let's say you had a game where your friend was really good at it and they went and they got to like a far level at their house and then you got the game to play with them. They could come over to your house with a passcode written down and enter it and it would be like them transporting their save game to your house. That's actually kind of a cool concept, I think. The idea of way back in the day, you could like bring save games to friends' houses. Cause like then once all the consoles and stuff had memory cards, it was like a thing of like, oh yeah, you can like put your save game and all your progress on a memory card and you can walk it over to your friend's house, put the memory card in their system. And then it's like, you know, your, your save game is over there, you know? And that was like really cool for people. Pass, passwords kind of did that same thing as well, you know? And also you could like tell your friends on the bus, you know, on the way to school, like passcodes for like different parts of different games and stuff. And you could like trade pass passwords and stuff. I don't know. Like I remember as a kid not liking passwords and wishing every game had a save feature like Zelda. But like in retrospect, it's not like a 100% bad thing to have passcodes. It's, it's kind of cool. Um, anyway, we're like slaughtering these aliens. I I'm trying to like remember consciously that I can walk backwards so that I don't like uh, get injured foolishly here. Because I think we're on, it says lives zero one. Oh, I only have one life left. <laughs> I was like, why is there a zero and a one? I get it. It's just a two digit, digit number with a leading zero. So we only have one life left. That's how you read that. I was sort when I read it zero and one, I thought they were referring to different things. And I was like, what does that even mean? So do I have zero lives or one life? What is a, like, is it number of extra reloads plus number of lives? Like I have zero reloads and one life. I don't know, I, I, I didn't understand it. And anyway, these are radioactive rooms apparently. Um, walk backwards, that did not work. Wait, can we just like walk through here? Oh, we can't. <laughs> So I never know, oh wait, but we can go through this. Okay, so for the, the laser beams, you have to pay attention to those arrows, gotcha. They tell you if you can walk through a beam or not. Pro tip, walk through the laser beams in the right direction. Uh, it's important, oh my God, you die. Let's just get the hell out of here. Um, oh God, there's an alien right there. Okay, there's another one, kill you. Where are we? Are we like in some kind of like weird funky basement? Like how there's just literally people torn in half. As you expect, Dyson didn't make it. Is the Alien Breed series like literally a ripoff of the Alien franchise? Because like Miles Dyson was in Terminator 2, which is James uh, Cameron, who also did Aliens, the second Aliens movie. And we ironically spent most of his life legless in another fashion, usually drinking alcohol-based brews, but now he really was legless. <laughs> Boy, this game would not fly on the Super Nintendo. I imagine trying to get this past Nintendo's strict, like, uh, you know, family quality code or whatever. You pick up, pick the deck lift pass from his jacket and shrug. Time to move on. I love how your character, like, just gives no Fs. He's just like, he just doesn't care. He's like, I've seen all this before, and it will happen again. I don't care. Oh, God, now there's like a... I, this is so cool. There's like a red alert security thing. My god. This is so, so neat. So yeah, like, uh, now I really want to go look up the, like, history of the Alien Breed series. Because I really feel like this, this game should have been licensed by 20th Century Fox. And they should have made this, like, an official Aliens product. And actually, no, I take it back. They shouldn't have. You know why? Here's the thing with, uh, once a, once a big company 
franchises or like takes over like a, a game and like makes it part of a movie they usually have all these directives from from you know executive directives so like include this add this do this and it like totally ruins the game so actually the fact that this is a ripoff aliens game is probably actually better because then team 17 could just do whatever they wanted so the deck lift is useless without the security pass you better search for it and exit out of the colony ground ground exits if you Wait, 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 an exit out of the colony grounds exits if you prefer that route. An exit out to the colony ground exits if you prefer... What did... I, I get the gist of what they're saying, but I, I still don't understand. Anyway, we had an elevator pass, so we're all good. Engineering Sector 2. The deck lift to the third floor of this tower has been security locked and lies beyond power control doors. To use the lift, find the deck lift pass. Enable the small power units to unlock the doors. A, co a corridor leads toward the science tower. All right, well, let's see where this goes. Uh, we're running low on live, so I'm, I'm thinking we'll be we dead pretty soon. You know, when I die, here here's what I'm going to do. Um... I think when I die, I'm going to look up some passcodes and see if we can find, like, a passcode from, like, really far in the game, and we'll boot it up, just to kind of, like, see what the game looks like much further on. But obviously, I mean, this game is the kind of game where you'd, like, you'd sit down and you'd, like, explore. As a kid, I would have, like, drawn out maps of, like, where things are and, like, where different exits go and stuff. Oh, God. Those aliens just destroyed me. I think I needed a more powerful gun. How many credits did I have, does it even say? Wait a minute, it says 1-Up and 2-Up. Did you guys see that at the top of the screen it said 1-Up? At the bottom of the screen it said 2-Up. Does that mean that there could be two players in this game? That's that's awesome. Can this game be played two players at the same time? Oh my god, and I love I love the uh, uh, I love the music. It's so Blade Runner-y. I accidentally put in... Uh, okay, what, what's happening here? Uh, I've lost control of the game. My name is colon inverted V. I can't do anything. My controller just just crapped out. Okay. Uh, let's let's look up let's look up a code for farther in the game here. All right. Well, the Amiga CD32 loads back up here. Um, there's a series of passcodes I found. You can start on a various various different levels. So you can go to like engineering level one, level main tower level three. There's also codes for like starting with like 255k worth of money, which would be pretty awesome. Um, there's there's some there's some passwords that literally say unknown effect, so it's a valid password. But the person who came up with it was like, ah, you know, hell if I know what this one does. It seems to work, but who the hell knows what it does? It's a mystery. Um, let's try. Starting with 255k assault rifle three. I want to start on a different level though. Um, let's let's just try this. Let's let's see how this goes. Um, so enter mission code. Wait, what 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 just happened? Th did I just accept the game? Oh my god. Okay, hold on. L let me reboot it. By the way, do you guys think that the Amiga CD32 start sound sounds kind of like the Avengers? You know, like the startup sound of, like, the Avengers. Um, I, I kind of think it does, actually. And, uh, by the way, are you guys psyched for Avengers Endgame? Because, like, I totally am. I mean, I guess spoilers if you didn't know the title of the movie, but I mean, at this point, everyone should at least know the title. Um, the Avengers is, is, like, such an interesting franchise. When... You know, when, like, Iron Man came out, I liked Iron Man. Captain America and Thor were, like, never interesting to me. So, like, I really wasn't looking forward to those movies. But, like, Captain America ended up being a great movie. And then, like, over the years, like, Marvel has built up their characters so much that, like, it's become, like, one of my favorite, like, movie franchises. Like, the MCU. It's 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 so cool that, like, I don't know. Um, all right. Restart code. Here we go. Oh, God. So... This, this code is like a 16-digit alphanumeric code. Uh, which one are we going with again? Uh, let's start at stores level 3. How about that? So the code is E. And then we have a J. And then we have a D. Uh, this is going to take a while. Hold on a sec here. It's at this point that you wish you weren't actually playing this on an Amiga CD32. You could just had a keyboard. 
Or better yet, you had a computer with a hard drive and you could just uh, go ahead and save and load games. But uh, if we if we did have a, a computer with a hard drive that had actual save games, we wouldn't be able to enter this sweet code. Kablamo. Enter. Cool, so we entered the mission code. Wait, we do, oh my God, we could have done two players. This game is co-op? <laughs> Talk about games blowing my mind. Why didn't I have this when I was a kid? This game is so awesome. I love Alien Breed, I can say it. Like, like it, it's sometimes I play classic games that I haven't played before, and like I play them and they're like, yeah, I could see maybe have, having liked this when I was a kid. Uh, you know, maybe I would have enjoyed this. But, uh, oh god, and the alien just walked. Oh my god, there's a flashlight too! That, that just continues to be more and more cool stuff. Oh my god, that's so neat. But yeah, like sometimes, you know, I play a classic game and I think I could maybe see myself liking this, you know, back in the day or whatever, but like, uh, it's fine, it's fine. But like sometimes you sit down, you play a game, and you're just like, wow, even now this game is cool. It's not that I could see myself maybe having liked this back in the day, but I like this now, and this is awesome. And I feel like this game is one of those. So, you know, I mean, in the same way that Marvel, you know, the Marvel movies really grew on me, and, like, now I really love them. You know, the Harry Potter movies did the same thing. Harry Potter seemed like kind of something for kids when it first came out. I wasn't really interested. I kind of wrote it off. But then I got forced to see a couple of the movies, and then before you knew it, I'm, like, uh, you know, in line to see, like, the last movie because I'm, like, really excited, you know, like, like... I think good things just eventually sort of, you know, hopefully people discover them. I can't believe this game got by me for so many years. I'm so happy I tried it. Um, so, yeah. So, we're going to we'll explore around here a little bit. Um, I think we may wrap this video up shortly, though. Um, as I say, we're kind of in the twilight period be between Christmas and New Year's. And uh, I don't really have a, a solid plan of, like, what I'm going to be playing. I mean, I, I, I have the games I'm going to be playing more or less picked out. And I'm, I might change some things around a bit here and there. But, uh, but you know, we're not playing anything from the 1001 Buck. I'm just kind of messing around with some games that have been on my list for a while that I've heard about through various sources. So, um, hence, the Saturday afternoon gaming. Definitively not on the Saturday. We're gonna, just going to stay in that, uh, in that series for a little bit here. So, uh, every day is Saturday between Christmas and New Year's, though, don't you know? And guess what? Even for several days after Christmas before we actually get going in the Thousand One Quest again. Oh, my God. By the way, speaking of, like, Christmas and the holidays and stuff, did you guys get any awesome gifts? Is there anything super cool waiting for you under that Christmas tree? Or if you don't do Christmas, maybe you just exchange gifts just because that's a fun thing to do? Or maybe you think, uh, you know, capitalism and all that jazz is going to be the downfall of society and you do not partake... So maybe maybe you didn't get any gifts, and that's that's actually fine if that's the case as well. Uh, maybe you, maybe you just bought something for yourself off a Steam sale, or maybe you don't like video games, and for some reason you're watching a guy guy's channel of a guy who plays video games. I don't know. I, I don't know why you'd watch my channel if you don't like video games. But hey, all are welcome here. This is a judgment-free zone. Um, but yes, yeah, so whether whether you're interested in video games or not, uh, Avengers Avengers Endgame, man. Uh, really looking forward to that one. Really looking forward to that one. I, I just, you know, it's gonna be good. You just know it's gonna be good. Um, yeah. So, I, I keep hearing like a female voice in the background saying stuff like "alarm systems activated." And I don't 100% know what she's talking about, but uh, whatever, whatever. We have 15 keys, by the way. Anyway, I, I think I'm definitely actually lost in the basement here with these aliens. I, I, I am simultaneously happy that we used the cheat code, but I'm also a little, uh, a little obviously lost. I don't exactly know where I'm supposed to be going here. So, I mean, we have some lives. We might as well just burn through them, getting, getting to the end of this level here. But anyway, Alien Breed Tower Assault. This is one of the games in the Alien Breed series. I will, at, at various points in the future be trying out the other alien breed games especially now that i've tried this one and i i realize how much i like it i'm really hyped to try the other ones i mean alien breed one and two will obviously not have as many features as this one um but there are alien breed games that came out after this one in fact I, if i'm not mistaken i think there was like a 2009 revival of this game on like ps3 and uh, xbox 360 so i need to get my hands on that at some point actually um, and I think the entire base just blew up, so you know what? 
when you detonate the entire base, I don't think there's any anywhere to go from there. So maybe that's a, a good call for us to go ahead and end our little uh, play around today. Our little uh, mess around with Alien Breed here. Um, oh, I had one more thing in my notes to say, which was um, the Amiga CD32. I know virtually nothing about. Um, so if anyone wants to sort of let us know what the system was about in the comments, that'd be appreciated. But you know what I realized the other day is like, I don't actually know that much about the Amiga. Like I, I know the name Amiga. I know Amiga is made by Commodore and all that jazz, but like, I honestly don't, didn't really know the whole history of the Amiga. Like very recently I watched a YouTube documentary by Ahoy, who's a guy who does great, uh, great documentaries about, uh, retro video game stuff. And uh, he described the whole Amiga history about how Commodore like almost went bankrupt and the Amiga 1000 almost ruined the company and it didn't really sell. But the Amiga was like a great product that EA was really supporting, oddly enough. Um, and then when Amiga branched into the Amiga 500, which was a more entry level model, and the 2000, then all of a sudden the Amiga really gained steam. And then it became like a, a platform that has all these amazing games on. Uh, because, uh, you know, it just, it was uh, such a good system for back in the day. So, uh, you know, here's another recommendation if you're looking for something to watch between uh, now and New Year's, if you're on vacation or something, is check out Ahoy's channel. He, his, uh, especially his Amiga uh, documentary is quite interesting, quite interesting. But uh, I think I just saw there we made it to uh, third place on the high scoreboard. Also, utilize area map. Oh my god, there's all these buttons. Recall mission text, pause. Okay, actually there's not that that many. Utilize area map. That's the one thing we didn't do. And log into terminal. Interesting. Anyway, uh, as I say, I've really liked this game. I hope you guys have had fun just sort of uh, watching me mess around with it today. If you have, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that jazz. Um, I got some other fun games coming up um, in our sort of twilight period here um, as we just sort of mess around over the holidays. So I hope you will tune back in soon. In the meantime, I'm going to go play some Division. I'm, like, itching to play. <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, I have other stuff to do, but I probably will play the Division at some point today. Um, but otherwise, you guys take care of yourselves. I hope you're having a great holidays. Hope you're getting some gaming in yourself. And uh, we will see you guys soon. All right, guys. Until next time, peace. <laughs> Beanbag, Spadge, Flossie, Zonk, and Tony. Oh, and Mega Man. Miss that one. Um, these names, by the way, are so reminiscent of Worms. You totally know this game was done by the Worms, guys. Oh, my God. Team 17. I need to see what other games these guys made. Because if they made Alien Breed and they made Worms, it, literally everything they make is, is like, gold. I, I, I there, There's got to be other games out there. There's got to be. I'm going to go look that up right now. Okay, I'm logging off for real now. All right. See ya.